What is up everybody? It was a fantastic first test between South Africa and England last Saturday and today I'm doing an in-depth analysis of the whole match looking at South Africa and England's performances, in particular the defence at the start. As always, welcome to Rugby Hemisphere. It was an unbelievable test match. Honestly, it was one of the best test matches I've ever seen. Both sides were absolutely going for it and both sides dominated different aspects of the game at different times, which was amazing to see. And especially the way South Africa managed to turn themselves around. You really don't need to be a Springbok fan to appreciate that. Uh, so we're going to divide this, this analysis into three parts. The first 20 minutes, the second 20 minutes, and after half time where it sort of leveled out between who was dominant. Starting with the first 20 minutes, it was clear from the start England had a desire to, to play the game fast and they immediately put the Springboks on the back foot with that, that penalty. But the defensive structure of South Africa was unrecognisable. It was absolutely terrible. I mean, here Pollard, he didn't, he didn't have to go in. Um, Deanti had it covered there and he should have gone for the outside. But it's simple things like this and that just opens it up. Um, Johnny May able to go what, 40 metres before passing. And that just gives uh, all that hard work to push the England um, back into their, their 22 is wasted. And, and the first try didn't take long to come. And I mean, Pollard here unable to make that tackle on Dia Linda, equally shocking in his tackling technique. But debutante wingers were the, the worst, I think, of it. I mean, Ian Corsi, he, he unfortunately had to deal with two, with two players, but he, he should have stayed on the outside. I mean, um, it looked like Mbanambi had um, th that other player covered. It's, it's, it's just, it's not good enough here, dear Linda. Why are you going so high, man? And Pollard as well. He's coming over at such a pace. You should know you're going to get stepped by Mike Brown, who is who's world class. And um, the scrum time as well. This is where we thought that the box were going to, you know, get it right, and they they didn't. Not in the first fifteen minutes. Volko Low got absolutely trashed by Marco Villapola. And um, England were absolutely gunning, gunning the box down and showing off any potential attack. And it's, it's worrying because, I mean, here, Nkosi has come up so far. He's left a massive gap around the back there. If Ford was just a bit more tactically, uh, tactically aware, um, he could have put that in behind them and that would have been a certain try. Here again, I mean, it's class from England, but terrible from the box. It's a perfect set set move from England, I mean, exploiting the gaps, again, Pollard not able to make that tackle, and the Rouge just too far off to, to make the tackle, and, um, I mean, uh, as the box as well, in this, in this first part, just terrible in attack, England able to shut off, shut off any attacking move, I mean, here, Arm should have given it out, there was space for Deanti, and England, just, just sublime, showing, and um, why they were ranked number two in the world, and again here, I mean, Deanti, he came in way, way too early. Um, Lucanio had that covered. He didn't have to come in. Uh, here you can see it. I mean, he's, he's, he's way out of position. They have to have to sort out the structure. We spoke about it last week against the Wales Test match. We, I said I'd hope they'd have it fixed by the second, second match, but, but they clearly didn't, and that's something they definitely have to work out. But then out of nowhere, it's just like Sia Kulisi suddenly managed to to rally the squad and, and despite a 21 point deficit uh, instill some pride in this Springbok side this is the moment where I, I think this whole resurgence sort of started for Mueller made a great catch and then they just held on to the ball for two minutes England defence going backwards all the time um, the discipline of England was, was absolutely terrible gave away something like over 10 penalties um, in the space of um, just a tiny part of the game and um, and South Africa were able to capitalise on that and, and, and push forward and they just kept applying pressure. It's like they were suddenly able to get inside England's skin and the crowd just picked up. The crowd went wild and that just completely shifted the momentum within two minutes and that instantly got at England. <laughs> Itoje and and Faf had this this whole thing, this whole game, where they kept pushing each other, and and here um, the the England lock was just a bit too too aggressive on trying to to get over the ruck, and and that cost them. But the Bok attack just suddenly it came alive. They suddenly found the gaps, and and they started to do do to the England defence what what England were doing so brilliantly in the first twenty minutes. But the sudden change was just 
which is brilliant and forced England to make mistakes here. Ole Dele should see that he's got Mike Brown outside him, but he decides to kick in, and that shows that they just they were just started to creep in a bit of frustration in you know the England attacking play, and and that that just helped South Africa come through so much strongly. The Ellen, they made strong carries, and the they they started to get frustrated. England here. I mean, George Ford, he could give it out why that they had exactly the same opportunities as they did in the first 20 minutes. It's not like the South African defence suddenly resurged and, and you know, closed all those gaps. They were the same the same spaces, and yet England didn't decide to, to you know, take those opportunities. Uh, like I said last week, the, the crowd had a huge factor. It's like as soon as they got a sniff... Of what the box could do, they, they they just came to the party and gave this team a whole resurgence. Um, the Springboks, in, in, you know, in this passage of play here at the the end of the um, just coming up to half an hour, they they were brilliant. I mean, yeah, Daly was unlucky, but that was just superb spotting and a great combination between Faf and and Dielende. Here, Faf, he's he's drawn that man. He's he's given it to Dielende. As long as Dielende can run straight, he can draw those two defenders, and that opens up enough space for the two players out wide. This is this is great stuff by the Springbok attack, and it's a great follow up on on what they did in the Wales match, and shows that those players who stayed behind, you know, the back line of Pollard, um, Dielende, Arm, um, and the two the two new wingers, Larue. It really made an impact. The the practice that they've done, they've really developed the attack, and they've and they've done stuff which the the team in Wales failed to do. Here, this particular passage of play, it screams New Zealand to me. The switching, the the vision, the the spotting of the space, it's all it's all all black stuff. And I I don't know who to give credit for that. You can say Rossi or the attack coach or what, but the way they've been able to progress as a team in terms of their attacking philosophy has been brilliant to see. I mean, Valley LaRue was absolutely brilliant in this passage of play. His ability to, to draw the man and create the space outside of him is exactly what we want to see from South African attack in all the Super Rugby teams. He draws three defenders, three defenders, in order to free up his outside man. And then there's a brilliant attack from, from Deontay and Corsi. And, and on that note, I just have to say that the shortcomings that they had in defence, boy, oh boy, did they work it in attack. And Corsi was absolutely brilliant. And uh, Deontay as well, just using those quick hands. And the South African attack looked brilliant. And, and equally, the England defence just opened up. It's I have to put it down to the crowd and just the intimidation. I mean, it told you that they're just getting frustrated Faf was absolutely sublime throughout the whole match. He he was world class. He was as, he was as good as the best I've seen from Aaron Smith. He played the game at such a fast pace that the England defence couldn't deal with him. It opened up space for them. Vili Leroux again able to exploit that England defence, drawing the fullback. He didn't even need to pass there. And slowly, as the box started scoring more and more tries, it became ever more apparent that England were falling away. They led a 21 point drop. 21 points. Now that is a huge margin to let go. And for the box to lead at half time was absolutely unbelievable. And that brings us on to Achia Sneeman, who was, like the other debutants, absolutely fantastic. I mean, to gallop away like a giraffe from three backs is unbelievable. I mean, exposing George Ford's. Terrible tackle technique like it was in the Six Nations there. And here, once again, um, the South African attack is shown to be functioning. Just just, just not enough good execution. Uh, a lot like the Bulls have been this season. So much potential, just not executing everything. But again, at this beginning, the beginning of the second half, the Springboks looked dominant. They were consistently putting England on the back foot. They kept England in their half. For about 20 minutes before England could break the deadlock. And they would just keep coming. They were attacking persistent every time. Pushing England to make mistakes. And and I mean I think Eddie Jones will be. He'll be fuming over it. The fact that the English were. Were running it in their 22 and, and not kicking. Uh, it was it was so visible. And then silly mistakes like this. I mean, kicking it all the way dead um, just exposes, I mean, the frustration, just continuing for England. I think it's, it, had South Africa been more clinical at the beginning of the second half, it would have been um, a victory that um, no one would have imagined after that first 20 minutes. I mean, here, look on your arm. Again, he's running across. What are you going? What are you going, dude? You're, you're leaving the space. I mean, 
the defense has didn't change in this game i don't think it remained the same all the way and it's it's the way england attack that the change their mindset seemed to to differ after they lost their their advantage it just seemed like they 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 they, they couldn't get the mojo back and it, and it became ever more clear i mean believe in a uh, Maco, sorry Vinopola. i mean knocking for the he they just they just had enough and here finally um that last springbok try Archie Snowman not being selfish, giving it away. I mean, there um, Johnny May realizes he's he's not going to be able, the other two defenders are not going to stop Snowman. And Snowman not being selfish gives it out. That is what we want to see. I mean, Snowman could probably have scored the try himself, but the way the Springboks are attacking is is so much better than last year. Um, it was a shame that they let those two tries go at the end, but England. Definitely started to switch on it the, in the last last few phases of the game. Definitely finding more form uh, as the box seemed to seemed to lose a bit of their their attacking prowess, but but still going going strong and uh, <laughs> setting up a nice a nice finish to the game, and um, with only three points in it. But it was a brilliant test match. Both sides going for it, and it's going to be very interesting to see how they approach this next match, the uh, the second test. Um, uh, just before we finish this, this this last bit was 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 annoying for me as a Springbok fan. I mean, Johnny May here, Elton Yankees. What are you doing? They they have to read each other. They have to read each other's players. I mean, Yankees. If you look at it here now, I mean, the, there's a there's a three on two, and Bo and Kazi. What is he doing? Where's the winger? He's supposed to be covering the wing. I mean, Notcho, who's coming across, is not going to keep up with Johnny May. Then Elton Yankees. He's come all the way across. He should see that uh, Nkosi is coming across. He should he should be able to to cover for Johnny May if he goes down the wing. But Yankees does nothing. Last man in defence, yet he's unable to 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 make the tackle, and that that keeps it pretty tense for the last few minutes. But an important steal there by Arches Neyman, and Yankees executes his best tactical kick in his career to to get the ball out, and the Springboks win the game, and that sums up. The best game the Springboks have played, undoubtedly, in the last two years. But thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be bringing out more videos over the course of this England series, so please do hit that subscribe button. Tell me below what you think about that first test. Who's going to win the second test? Who's going to win the series as a whole? Like and subscribe, and go Bokka!